Good morning. I'd like to welcome you to our service today. Good, Good to have Connie and Brent Weaver here with us. Yeah. And I want you to know that the first hymn, God Will Take Care of You, I personally selected because God has sure been taking care of you. Yeah. So I thought it would be a good way to start our service. Good to have you back with us. We're looking forward to what you're going to share with us in missionary endeavors. So, any announcements that need to be made? Anyone? Yes. Uh, the work party for this week will be scheduled for Thursday, 10 to 12. Whatever work we get done that day, uh, that'll be it for me for three weeks. Spirit. 
Let's come to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we want to lift up those on our, our prayer list. And we want to just share. And we know that Joey is going through so much with Jack. We need to know peace. And we uh, just want to thank you for your answer to prayer, which we've already heard this morning. Because, Lord, we put our faith and trust in you. We don't have to worry. Sometimes, though, the hand of God does not work as fast as we would want it to take place. But, Lord, you know what's best. Scripture says your thoughts and ways are higher than our ways, and how true that is. Scripture tells us also the great groanings of our heart. You know exactly what our heart is and what's going on in our lives. And all of our prayers should always be, be according to your will. So, Lord, meet the needs of the church today. And, Lord, most of all, help us the church to to show others around us that Jesus Christ does make a difference. As we think about prayer, we always have access to prayer at any time, 24 7. So as we pray about the prayer you taught us, the Lord's Prayer, it's most familiar to all of us. So let us listen to the words this morning as we pray the prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy name is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, will the ushers come forward to receive our morning offering?
Okay, in the garden, 314. Well, first and third.
none will have no change in this church. No, I haven't. Who's making that?
good choices. So. I have something to say about that song. Yes. When I was in first grade, That's our teacher taught us this song in class. Mm -hmm. That's how times have changed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was one of the times when we used to That's why we read the Bible. Right, exactly. Thanks for saying. All right, well, it's my pleasure to welcome today Colleen and Brett Weaver. We've been following your travels and keeping you in prayer. And uh, you got plenty of time, but that clock is slow. But don't worry about it. <laughs> as long as you want, they're used to be going over anyway. So, so come on up and welcome her. We'll have a good afternoon.
But peace is something that, if you think about it, honestly, is very much lacking in our world today. We had to evacuate the country of Ukraine because within a few short weeks after we left, the war began. But there's so many places where there's not peace. Even in our own country, the United States, there's so much disagreement and so much anger that the world does hardly knows anymore what peace is about. And so I think as followers of Jesus, who is the Prince of Peace, one of the things we want to do is be people of peace and to bring and pass the peace of Christ to those around us because they're longing for it. One of the ways that I learned this was when I lived in Ukraine, when we moved into our apartment there, I felt anything but peace. Moving to Ukraine was very difficult for me. Even though I had been a missionary for many years, I didn't speak the language. Brent had to always come grocery shopping with me because I couldn't figure out what things were. So I was dependent on him to read and try to communicate with him as a non-cook. Well, he has three recipes he makes, but you know, trying to find <laughs> the things that I wanted in the grocery store. And in the apartment, when we moved into our apartment in Ukraine, um, their idea of renting you an apartment is different than what I had experienced. When you rent the apartment, you rent it fully furnished. Now that doesn't just mean with furniture, it's with everything that they no longer want. So all their dishes, all their stuff, all their things that might be broken, it's just piled full of their stuff. And that was really hard for me. Like now what do I do with all this stuff? And so I slowly worked away at it, trying to figure out how to do creative packing away and hiding of all their stuff to make a place of peace. And it wasn't just peace for me because having hospitality and entertaining people and bringing them into the home and having them experience the peace of Christ was something I desired. Well, I found out that God had met that desire and he was working to bring his peace one day when my daughter Catherine, who was living and working in Ukraine with the United States Peace Corps, had asked us to host a birthday party in the home. And she invited her friends to come. One of them was a young woman who is not a believer. She has no faith at all. And she came to the birthday party. We had cake and we had fun together. And uh, there were all these young adults that were friends of my daughter's. And this young woman, Catherine's friend, who's not a believer, she had to leave early. And so she left. She went to the train station in Kiev and was about an hour on the train heading back to her hometown in western Ukraine when she messaged my daughter. What did your mom put in the cake? I'm feeling such peace. I felt peace when I was at your house and I'm still feeling it an hour on the train. What did your mom Spirit, not to put the spirit in the cake, but what she was responding to was the presence of Christ, who is the Prince of Peace, who brings peace. And that young woman will occasionally even come now when we meet online with uh, believers who are dispersed across the Europe, and she will often message after she's with us in a Bible study. I feel such. So she doesn't yet know Jesus, but she's responding to his presence. And I think that's something that Jesus challenges us in this passage. If you haven't thought of it, ask Jesus, the Prince of Peace, to bring peace to your life so that you can bring that peace to others. The second thing I see here is Jesus, he, he just... He's just with them and he acknowledges their fears and he offers, you know, please touch me, see me. And then he says, yeah, bring me something to eat. That, that promise of his presence, I think, is something that we're challenged to do, that we represent Christ with flesh on here with, in our communities and with the neighbors and the people that we live. And uh, that's something that I learned when I was here in New Brooklyn. It, you know, I'm just having memories flooding back in as, as I'm here today. Um, 
one of my most special memories was going to visit. I, uh, there was one of the women in the church at, at here, and if I named her, some of you would know, but she had to go and visit her elderly mother, and she was afraid that her mother wouldn't recognize her. Now, this woman was my mother's age, so when I showed up to go with her to visit her mother, it was like I was a daughter. And as we began to walk down the hospital here in, in uh, I think it was either Williamstown or is it maybe Turnersville, I can't remember which hospital we were in. We're going down the hallway and she takes a hold of my hand. And I just thought, this is what it means to be a shepherdess, a pastor, and to go along and be Christ with flesh on. I can't imagine what it feels to go and visit your mom and be fearful that your mom's not going to recognize you. It doesn't matter that you're 70 some years old. No, we need to be Christ with flesh on. And, and invite people to share their questions that they have and, and not be troubled by them. And then to offer, hey, I'm here. See, I'm with you. Be with me. I remember visiting, we, Mary and I, we would go visiting. That's being Christ with flesh on. And that's something that we practiced in Ukraine in making our home a place of hospitality and a place where people could gather and whether it was comfortable or not. And then other thing, another interesting thing about Ukraine is if you have food in Ukraine, you always share food. Now I had to learn that lesson. I remember one day we had a group in our home uh, that had come to help us in English camp, and I had made a, a meal, and I had packed away the leftovers, and I thought, oh, good. I have a whole other meal right here ready to go later. And uh, we were going to have a meeting with the Ukrainians who were going to help us with camp later that afternoon. Well, one of them showed up early, and I just had packed away the food. Well, in Ukraine, you have food. You always share it. So I asked, a little bit reluctantly, would you like something to eat? <laughs> yes, I would. Um, well, okay, so I scoop out some and warm it up. Okay, well, I still have quite a bit left here. Okay, fine. Well, not now, another one comes. It's still <laughs> early, you know, it's early for him. Would you like some food? Oh, yes, I would. I mean, they'll always accept it, too. That's the other side of it. You know, so I watched my food as that people kept coming early, dwindle, 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 dwindle. But that's a wonderful, that's hospitality, isn't it? And Jesus is the bread of life. There's always going to be plenty if we trust him. So that's the se second thing I learned from this passage, that we represent Christ with skin on, and we need to be close to people, to let them ask their questions, express their fears, and then bring Christ to that. The third thing that Jesus does is then he breaks open the word. Isn't it interesting? First he passes peace, then he comes up close to them, and then he teaches. Many times we try to hit them with the message right off. I am. And here's what you know, but he makes that relationship with them first, and then he breaks open the word. And he teaches them, and it says he opened their minds so they could understand. And that's one of the most important parts of our ministry, is sharing the word of God with people and teaching the word of God with them. And not just teaching it so they can know it, but so that they'll live it and put it into practice. One of the last things we do each time, we're going to meet with Ukrainians online at 1 o'clock today. And one of the last questions that will be discussed before we close our time online together is, so after reading this passage, what is God or Jesus calling you to do this next week? We want to put the word into practice. And then the, and that teaching the word of God is what we're committed to. Um, and you're going to hear about that from Brent. And then the fourth thing is, once you've taught them, you want to send them. If you notice that's the last thing Jesus says, you're going to be my witnesses. So we don't want to just hold on to all that good stuff for ourselves. We want to send other people out to give them the teaching they need, to give them the relationship that strengthens and supports them, and then to send them out so that they can share with others. And so I want to just give an example of, uh, of sending, I guess. Um, in Ukraine, you know, I've been, I've been there 11 years. Um, 
and so built up many, many relationships. We run English clubs, English camps, uh, reached out mainly to young people. And I just want to tell you the story of Darina. If we were in a church that could show pictures, I love to show pictures so you could see. But Darina now is about 32, I guess. But when I met her, she was 18 years old, um, a university student. Uh, and we, she was coming to our camp. She came to our camp, not a believer. She came with a boyfriend, loved the games, loved the sports, um, even loved the singing, um, but Jesus, not interested. Um, okay, you know, we get some who come to camp and give their lives to the Lord, and they start to be connected into our ministry, but not Dorena. Uh, year goes by, two years goes by. I guess... Maybe this, this, after two years, I bumped into her in a shopping mall in a city, you know, the key has about five million people. So, you know, it's a bit rare to bump into somebody in a shopping mall, but there she is with her boyfriend. I said, I said, oh, are you interested in coming back to camp? She says, I've actually been thinking about that. Am I allowed to? I said, sure, come back to camp. This time she came ready to, she'd done the games, she'd done the sports. She decided, okay, I need to find out about this Christianity. I need to work out, is, is this thing real, what they were telling me? And she came full of questions, um, full of her doubts, her worries, her concerns. Her boyfriend wasn't interested. He didn't come. Um, they, they broke up. And this kind of shattered her. She came to camp kind of down, shattered, looking for something. Um, she responded. Now, she didn't pray to become a Christian at the end of camp, but she started to come to our, what we call life groups. So this is, our church in Ukraine is different. We don't have a building, we don't have pews, we don't have pulpits. Um, you know, we just met in our apartment. And so she came um, to one of the groups, sat, listened, discussed the Bible. And I remember asking her, it was probably about six months later, Darina, have you made a decision? Like, do you believe this stuff? And uh, she said, well, I'm coming to, but bring. you have to understand, I want to know that this is true because when I make my decision to be a Christian, that is it. I, I don't want to then, after you think, oh, was that the right, was that wrong? I want to explore and understand completely. Um, and I thought, whoa. You know, that, because many times, you know, people could make decisions, you know, on an emotional moment or something she wanted to know. And a few weeks later, she announced to me with a big smile on her face, yes, I've decided um, to be a follower of Jesus. Well, now moved quite a few years. She became a leader. She, was, she and another friend started their own home group and had a meeting. Actually, it wasn't in a home. It was in a cafe. So they started a new Bible study group in a cafe. I went and visited, studying the Bible. All the music's going on around. You know, it's like a food hall in a shopping mall. And uh, But great group. Um, that group is still kind of together, except now Darina, when the war happened, she had to evacuate from Ukraine and is now in Budapest, Hungary. Okay, what does this got to do with the last point? The last point Colleen was saying was send out. Okay, now you might imagine, well here is this young woman, single, moved to a completely different city, you know, in a devastating situation, she still has a job online, what's going to happen to her? First thing she does, she's looking for opportunities. Who can I start a Bible study with? What Ukrainians are around, they then, she connected with a couple of other missionaries and started a, a feeding um, Ukrainian refugee families and eventually invited them to a Bible study. So now she's led, leading her own group. So this is, young woman decides to become a Christian, but one of the things, I think sometimes in church, it's like, you become a Christian, and then what? Well, then you sit, you come to meetings, and it's great, and you... But I think there's a bit more, and we've really encouraged everybody who becomes a Christian to be seeking, what is it that God wants me to do? How am I going to serve? Where am I going to serve? For her, it's leading Bible studies. For many others, it's serving the poor. It's serving in so many different ways. Um, but... Our situation is changing, as some of you who get our emails um, will know that we're not actually going to return to Ukraine now. With the war, with all kinds of things, um, God's kind of led us to go to the country of Estonia. 
And who knows what, where that is? Yeah, who knows where Estonia is? <laughs> right here, right here. I, I never knew where Estonia is. It's kind of, I don't know if you know where Finland is. You know, it's kind of uh, Sweden, Norway, Finland, and Estonia is a tiny little country. Uh, it's about the size. I don't know, I, I didn't look up, I should have, how big it is compared to New Jersey. I doubt whether it's as big as New Jersey. It's 1.3 million people, and so three quarters of them are Estonians, a quarter of them are Russians. It was part of the Soviet Union. Um, very, very atheistic country. Uh, in fact, they're quite proud that they're always in the top five most non-believing countries in the world. Um, they have had a Christian history of the Lutheran Church um, and, a, and a history of the Methodist Church. In fact, I read just last week the biggest Methodist Church in Europe was in Tallinn, in the capital of um, Estonia. And that's actually where we're going. We're going to Tallinn um, and we will be serving at that Methodist Church. They, in the, in the 90s, when the Soviet Union fell, um, they were able to build a large building where their church is based and also a Bible seminary. And so Colleen's going to be teaching at that seminary. I'll be teaching a few classes. Um, why Estonia? I've had quite a lot of history while I was living in... I lived in Russia before Ukraine, so while I was living in Russia and in Ukraine, I would visit Estonia because I've been coaching church leaders there and uh, one couple in particular that are doing church planting, starting home groups. So I'll continue the work with, with that. Colleen will be um, teaching in the seminary. But our passion is to do exactly what Colleen's just outlined from the scripture. So she's kind of highlighted four points. It, to pass the peace. Now we're looking for an apartment. We're looking for an apartment kind of downtown, close to uh, where the seminary is, so that we can have an open home. Um, students to come, other people that we're meeting, to make that connection, to eat food together. I think this is key. Didn't Jesus, Jesus ate with all kinds of people, all of the time. God even went up with 70 elders with Moses, and what did they do at the top of the mountain? It says they had a meal together. I don't know how you eat a meal with God, but um, that's, that's what they did. Um, so passing the peace, we want to build relationships with people, with students. I want to connect with not only church leaders, but with lay people, and help them um, to see, what is, to ask that question, what more has God got for me to do? What does it mean to be a follower of Jesus? Because the word follower of Jesus implies Jesus is going to lead me somewhere. You know, uh, you wouldn't follow a leader if all the leader did was sit down and you sit down with them. You know, I, Christianity is a moving um, thing. Where is Jesus leading? Um, we want to build relationships. That was the second point that Jesus, you know, building with flesh on. We, are, we have the Spirit of God in us. The Bible tells us this. So when we go physically to people, we are taking um, God's influence with us. Um, and we want to teach the Word. So I've said about how Colleen um, has, uh, is going to be teaching uh, at the seminary. So she's going to be teaching maybe more New Testament books, Old Testament books, Kind of theology, but one of the great opportunities that she has, and I know it's a passion for her, is going to be teaching spiritual formation. Like helping, like many of these people coming, they, they are working maybe in churches already, maybe some of them are already pastors, um, some of them are leading youth groups or Sunday schools, but there's one, it's one thing to get a whole lot of this book, you know, like in your head, with facts and figures and information. But it's a different thing to be transformed in your heart and to become a real follower of Jesus, a, a true lover of God and a lover of people. And so that's a passion that Colleen has to help those students, not just develop academically, but to develop in their following of Jesus. Um, and I want to do that on a, on a different side um, by, mo by helping churches mobilize their people. And that's probably the simplest way I could say it. Um, and I just want to give you an example of that, this idea of training, teaching, and then sending. Um, many years ago, I, I um, went and they said, Brent, tell it, teach us a seminar on evangelism. And I'm thinking, I'm not an evangelist. I'm actually a teacher. I used to be a high school teacher in New Zealand. That's where I'm from. In case you're trying to work out 
<laughs> what kind of accent is that? I'm from New Zealand. I'm actually becoming an American. So right now, I'm trying to get American citizenship, so I'll be able to change my accent. And become, I, I don't know why I suddenly become Southern and glory to Jesus. Um, but anyway. <laughs> but equipping and sending. Like I, they said, do this seminar. And so I said, oh, okay. And I just read something about these three words. Prayer, care, and share. I thought, oh, they rhyme. That's that's really nice. Yeah, so repeat that after me. Prayer, Prayer care, care, share. And, share. Okay? and I thought, that's, that actually encapsulates the essence of things. So I went to this group. There was a couple of young people, um, but mostly the group was older people. In fact, mostly it was older women. There was about eight people in the group. And uh, some, of the, some of the ladies, I'll mention three names. Vika, Endla, and Ludmilla. Okay, Biker, Endler, and Ludmilla were at this meeting. So uh, at that time, Endler, she was probably 80. Viker would be a little bit younger, maybe five years younger. Ludmilla, she was young. She was only 65. <laughs> we, I said, prayer, what I want you to do is to write a list of names of everybody that you know. So we got out of it, gave them all a piece of paper. They weren't used to this, you know, being asked to do something in a seminar. You know, they were used to just... Teach us something, and then we go home and have a cup of coffee. Well, have a cup of coffee first, that's most important in Estonia, and then we go home. No, I'm going to make you do some work. Take out a piece, I suggest you do this. This is your homework. Take out a piece of paper and just write down the names of all of the people. The, pe you know, the person at the supermarket, your next door neighbours, people at work, relatives, you know, and then look at them and kind of decide. Uh, uh, maybe some of them are already Christians, but maybe many of them aren't. And just start praying for them. Just start praying for them. I love this list in your oh, in your bulletin thing. There's a list of all of these people. That's what they did. They just wrote down and started praying. God, open up an opportunity. Give me an opportunity to do the next thing, which is prayer. What was the next one? Care. 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 Just start doing stuff. Just start loving. Just start visiting. Just start saying kind words and encouraging every opportunity you had to interact with that person. You prayed for them. Ask God, give me a chance to care, to show your love in some way. And then get ready to share. Well, share what? It's often a thought. What, okay, what do we do? You know, I'm not a preacher. I don't really know the Bible that well. So we taught just a few very simple things. One is your own personal story. How you got to know God. What was it? You know, we had them practice, write it, so you could say it in three minutes. Because most people haven't got three hours to listen to your whole life story. But they wrote their personal testimonies and practiced that. They, we shared just a very simple way that you could share about Jesus. And, and, uh, and off they did. But at the end of the seminar, these old ladies looked at each other and they said, We're old ladies. We don't know anybody. And, and Endla... The oldest one, the, she's now bless her, she's, 90, she's just turned 90. She looks at these other ladies and says, yes we do, because we are old ladies. <laughs> and, there's, and there's old people's homes. We need to go to the old folks' home. And so they trundled along, Emla and Viker, they, I don't know, they just got bold. They went with a cassette player with hymns on a cassette player. And they said, can we play some hymns? <laughs> And, and then we're just going to pray and we're going to read one verse from the Bible and pray. And they gathered some people together. That's how they started. It's now a Bible study. They have that group. They have started two more groups. Lude Miller. Lude Miller is crazy. She has her evangelism approach is this. Oh, actually, she was challenged because oh, I could talk faster. She went to her local bus stop and saw three men. Older men standing at the bus stop. A little bit drunk. Oh. In, in Russia, in Soviet, this means drink. <laughs> so a little bit drunk, I would do that. No, I shouldn't. Uh, a little bit drunk, you know, and, and just at the bus stop. And she felt the Lord saying, you pray, here's an opportunity. Go and speak with him. No, I'm a bit nervous. I don't want to do it, no. And she didn't. The next week she goes back, there's two men at the bus stop. She went over to them. She said, where's the other man who was with you? Oh, he died. She was so cut to the soul. She said, 
I'm so sorry to hear about that, but I need to tell you something. God, I don't know if you guys believe in God. You're probably atheists, but God told me to come last week and speak to you about Jesus because you guys are old. I'm old and I'm going to die. And you're old and you're going to die. And you, do you know God? Do you know what's going to happen when you die? And I didn't tell you. I need to tell you two now because I didn't get a chance to tell that man. And so that's now her strategy. When she goes to the old folks' home, it's like, you're going to die, I'm going to die. We're old. We're old here, you know. What are you really? Do you know about God who loves you? He's not sitting on some throne ready to slam you with a hammer and judge you and send you to hell. No, God loves you. He wants a relationship. He wants a friendship with you. So these great, they're just a couple of examples of some of the just ordinary people who a few years ago just were in church but had no idea that God wanted to use them to I don't like the word leader but they kind of are because leader has all kinds of connotations to it sometimes they oh leader I don't want to be a leader of something and they didn't want to they wouldn't even see themselves as a leader of anything they just asked God God show me some people show me what what do I have what can I do Who's around me? So I'd encourage you to think about that prayer, care, and share. Um, maybe that's something that if you're feeling, yeah, I'm one of those people. I, I sit here. Um, I'm listening. I'm, I've been learning. I'm, I know a little bit about God. I've had some experience with God. Maybe now's the time that God may be thinking, not God maybe go overseas all the way to Africa or somewhere to do this, but there's neighborhood here. There's people here who don't know Jesus. Um, I just want to finish with, with um, I don't know the culture of, of, of America. I'm, I'm starting to learn a little bit. But in Christian homes in New Zealand, um, especially of older people, like my auntie, who bless her heart, she's passed away now. But she had a refrigerator covered with these, <laughs> with missionaries. And, and this is part of, you know, you could tell if you walked into a Christian's home. Because on the refrigerator, it's all kinds of missionaries all over. Now, I don't know if you have missionaries on your refrigerator. Um, but if you don't, we could be the first. So if you don't have our lovely picture, and there's a little bit written about us. Actually, this is now a little bit out of date because this was printed before we decided to go to Estonia. But you just have to remember that we are now in Estonia. Um, just to go to a refrigerator say, God bless them. You know, wherever they are, I can't remember which country they're in, but God God knows where we will be. Um, just bless them. If you want that, we have some down at the back near the little, as you go out the door. Um, but if you want to know more about what we're doing and follow us, I know some of you do, we send out a, a month, about, about every month, um, a newsletter by email, um, just with our updating. It's called Weaver's Wanderings, because we don't know where we are going to be sometimes in the world. Um, and just explain a little bit about what our prayer needs are, what's happening, show some photographs of the people that we're working with. So if you want that, there's a sheet where you can sign up. There's not a pen there yet, but I'll get a pen um, for you. You could just put down your name and email address and some contact information because we'd love to just be, we feel such a part of you. I know Colleen, this is really her home. I mean, um, we've been looking so forward, but even me, I'm so, I'm so thankful that people remember who I was and the greetings I had coming in the door. You know, we now have little families of God all around the world, people who are praying and who are taking an interest and thinking about what's happening um, with those people over in Estonia who are praying, caring, and sharing. So thank you so much for... Wait, just if I can give you some specific prayer requests. Um, our departure date is uh, August 15th. So between now and August 15th, we have all kinds of things that we're going to be doing, but would you just please pray with and for us that everything is in order and ready to go when it's time to, to go to Estonia on August 15th. One of those things for us is Brent's application for U.S. citizenship. Um, his green card took forever. And so by faith, we move forward with this because Having citizenship would allow him, one, to be over there for a long period of time, which you can't always do with just a green card, but it will make our lives easier coming and going and also when we think of retiring because our, our family is here. Um, and just uh, 
Yeah, there's that God will go before us and provide the right house, the right apartment, we'll live in an apartment. And then um, last evening we were with people, we still have our apartment in heat. God has protected it, it has not been damaged, we're still paying rent, um, but all our things are there. Now they're just things, but some things are, they have nostalgia and attachment, or even they're important for this basic living. But that God would provide a way for us to return to Kiev after we get to Estonia, not just for things, but there's people that we want to see. Some people are back. Um, we have a young man in our, our life group well, when we meet online. He's in the army. He's just been injured. And um, there's people we care about in Ukraine, and we've not, uh, we'll stay in relationship and in touch with Ukraine. So those are just some specific prayer requests. August 15th. Brent's uh, citizenship application, and that just God would go before us in all the details, in the move, apartment, and even being able to return to Kiev to to have closure on our ministry there. Thank you very much. Very appreciative of all you share. And you sure will be in our prayers. Absolutely. I recognize your accent, though. <laughs> <laughs> but I know about British accents. <laughs> but you and Neil can compare on that thing, so. Well, thank you very much. And uh, our closing hymn is Leaning on the Everlasting Arms, and that's pretty appropriate. Too. Appropriate, yeah. Yeah, I thought it would kind of tie into everything. Really. So, 133. Thank <laughs>
of a relationship with Jesus Christ because as Colleen shared earlier and both friends have shared this world and there's a lot of problems in this world but the answer is a relationship with the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and I pray you'll anoint them in the Bible studies the message that they share so Lord we just pray now your blessing upon Colleen and Brent be with them now as we pray this prayer in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost Amen, Amen. 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 God bless you